Okay, so the time is now 11.05. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I think everybody <laughs> knows that my name is Melvin Colvin, or at least all, all the ABC members. And so I will just start with this series of, of virtual events that we're doing, which is called How to Do Biz, the How to Do Biz series. Um, it's one of those activities where there's just more substance and it's really meaningful because this information should move the entrepreneur and the business owner forward in a process to where you are positioning yourself to be qualified so you can, you can bid, uh, you can participate, uh, you can win. Uh, opportunities uh, in, in some way, shape, or form. It, it could be it could be as a subcontractor, but uh, I'm very focused on producing and delivering these sessions. Uh, this is the second one. The first one, as many of you will recall, was how to do business with the Atlanta public school system, and uh, I'll be doing some follow up to see you know do we have members who are now. Uh, say engaged in that process but today i'm very excited because this one in particular is one that i've always wanted to make happen and so today we have how to do business with the state of georgia a tremendous opportunity for our organization and and our members uh, to become more knowledgeable you know what is the process what are my next steps all of that, uh, because first things first, but that's what we have to do first is understand what is the process and what do I need to do now to get myself in position. Um, I've always said that winning contracts or somehow participating in, in this space is what really can take your business to the next level, these type opportunities. And so without any further delay from me, uh, I do want to turn it over to our friends from the state of Georgia, uh, Miss Talisha Farrell Jackson in particular, uh, someone that I'm, I'm acquainted with, and um, she's committed to this work, and we're very fortunate to have uh, people like her with the state uh, because we're on a mission. So um, Talisha, are you uh, ready to take the controls, ma'am? absolutely taking the reins good morning okay well you know i'm here in case you all you need to throw it back to me you know i, I can always i can always rock the mic <laughs> yes because I, I i <laughs> as they say rock the mic and i throw yeah. things at you all the time melvin you handle it very well so right. but all my people they they, they know me they, they know me well <laughs> okay good 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 so good morning, everyone. And I am Talisha Farrow Jackson. And I am going to fast forward. And I am with the state of Georgia, Department of Administrative Services. And today I brought with me my expert team, <laughs> my mentors and collaborators, uh, Dr. Carl Hall. He's one of our group managers um, in contract management and marketing. And I also brought Julian Bailey, Andrea Bailey, who's our marketing outreach specialist. I am your small business outreach specialist, and I will be with you today, and I will be sharing resources um, and small business initiatives from the Department of Administrative Services on their behalf. So I will do that later in Alexa, the presentation. Pause. I will do that later in the presentation, but first I would like Dr. Hall, if you would introduce yourself and then Julian will be able to introduce herself as well. Yes, good morning. Good morning, Ms. Jackson. Good morning. To the team, everyone. Thank you so much for allowing us to come. Uh, I'm Dr. Carl Hall. I'm the group manager, uh, the contract management group uh, at State Purchasing. And I am very much honored to be here today and, and uh, to have a discussion with regards to opportunities uh, with the state of Georgia 
And uh, I'm gonna give you a little cursory into what my discussion is going to be with you. Uh, just keep in mind one thing as you uh, listen to the discussion and also afterwards, develop a wide lensed view uh, of the opportunities that are available. So looking forward to the discussion. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Okay, great. Um, and now Julian's having a, some technical difficulties. Let's see if we can hear her. Julian, are you there? Oh, uh, no. Hello, can you hear me? There she is. Good Julian. morning, everyone. How are you doing? We're well, thank you. All right, so I am Julian Bailey, and I am the marketing outreach specialist here at State Purchasing, and I am responsible for marketing, communication, outreach, supply training, which Talisha and I conduct. And so today we will be going over um, doing business with the state of Georgia um, with you. So looking forward to um, you know providing some information to you. Thank you, Julian. Sure. Okay, if we would, we're going to go ahead and get started and we'll let uh, Julian go ahead if you will present Dr. Call, and then I will finish this off and in between we'll have a few poll questions thrown in there for you all. Again, we look forward to it and if you do have questions in the meantime, please feel to put them in the chat or hold your questions and we'll be happy to answer them at the end of each presentation. All right. Uh, will you be driving the presentation, Talisha? Yes, ma'am, I will. All right, sure. sure. Okay. Thanks. All right, so today we're gonna to be going over state purchasing. We're, we're gonna talk, talk about our Georgia procurement manual, our order of president, oh, our um, statewide contract. contract. We, have we have a competitive, competitive requirement, requirement in the state of Georgia. Um, these source procurement registry. We will, we will give you some business, business definition, small, small business, business initiative, supply, supply training, and as Felicia said, resources. Um, while I'm going through the presentation, if you have any questions, of course, we'll um, respond to them um, afterwards. <coughs> Julian, can you hear me? It's Melvin. Yes, yes I'm hearing you. you. Yeah, uh, Julian, uh, do you have? Uh, Two devices. You, if if you could mute the other one. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, you may have two, and so just mute. Are you hearing me better? Um. Uh, well, go ahead and speak. We'll see. I'm speaking. Are you hearing me better? Oh yeah. See, yeah. There it is. <laughs> Whatever you did. All right. Yes. Good. Yes. Okay. <laughs> because I had some technical difficulties. Yeah. So of course, I'm on the computer and I'm on the phone just in case. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Happening. Okay. Cool. Thank um. You. But but you're hearing me good. Everyone is hearing me good. Yes. All right, sure, so we'll continue. The next slide, Felicia. All right, so state purchasing. So just to give you a little bit of information on who we are and what we do, state purchasing is one of five divisions within the Georgia Department of Administrative Services. And so we have fleet, surplus, HRA, um, fleet, surplus, HRA, um, state purchasing and risk, right? So those are the five divisions. And state purchasing is responsible for the procurement of $4.5 billion of goods and services each year for all the state colleges, entities, and universities. So if you think about it, that's a huge market right there. You think about all the public colleges in the state of Georgia. So if you think about Georgia State, Georgia Tech, UGA, they all fall under our purview. If you think about the entities, so the Department of Education, Correction, um, they all fall under our purview. Um, and so what the division does is it sets the procurement rules and regulations, which I'm gonna be going over. It manages the procurement systems and platforms. And those are the systems and platforms that I'm gonna tell you about today. And it and regulates what we call statewide contract. And that's Dr. All here. Dr. All will be going those statewide contracts with you. And it promotes equal access and competition among suppliers. What that pretty much means is that the state of Georgia does not have any set aside program in place. There's no preference program. You know, they like to say we're all on the same level playing field because there's no set aside. However, if a state entity, colleges or university receive federal funding, 
there might be goals that they need to, you know, um, make. Uh, so with federal funds, there's, you know, it, it, it's different, but for state funds, there's no set aside program um, in place. So Georgia procurement manuals. So any information you need as it relates to procurement in the state of Georgia, you can get from this document. It's a very large document. It's available in two formats. We have an online version and a print version. If you need any information, I will highly suggest that you access the online version. Reason being, as I said, it's a large document, but in addition to that, the manual is updated um, periodically. So we just went through a series of updates. Um, and so you do not want to print this document and then you're trying to get information and that the information you have is outdated or it's not correct. So again, if you need to access information on the procurement process in the state of Georgia, please access the online version. So our order of precedence, before we can purchase anything in the state of Georgia, we have to follow this process. And this four tier process where tier one is what we have, what we call mandatory statewide contract. That's where Dr. Hall comes in. If what we're buying is on a mandatory statewide contract, we have to buy from that contract. If it's not in tier one, we go down to tier two. And this is where the various entities put contracts in place to be used across the board by these entities. So for example, if the Department of Education realized that there is a need, it could put a contract in place and whenever anyone need to use that goods or services, they have to buy from that contact, um, contract. If it's not in tier two, then we go down to tier three, which is where we have the Georgia Enterprise for products and services and the Georgia Department of Corrections, they sell products. Many of their products are mandatory. So if there's a need, we have to buy um, from them. If it's not in tier three, then we go out to tier four and where we have that red outline, that's where we comes out to the open market um, with you guys. So we have a competitive bidding requirement in the state of Georgia. If what we're buying is, um, if what we're buying is under twenty-five thousand dollars, there's no formal bidding required, which means that the bid does not have to be posted to the Georgia Procurement Registry. The buyer can pretty much get solicit um, quotation from, say, three suppliers, and they can make the determination as to who they buy from. If it's twenty-five thousand dollars or more, a formal bidding has to be put in place which means that the bid has to be posted to the Georgia Procurement Registry in one of the four sourcing methods that we use. It has to be posted as an RFQ, which is a request for code, RFP, request for proposal, RFI, request for information, or RFQC, request for qualified contractors. An RFI and an RFQC do not end in an award. Reason being, an RFI is where we're collecting information to see if it's even feasible for us to do an RFP. And an RFQC is where a list of qualified contractors are put in place so that when the bid is ready, only that list of contractors will be invited to bid. We have two sourcing tools in place. We have Team Georgia Marketplace and eSource, and these are the tools that I'm going to go over with you today. So we have a poll question now. Um, yes, we do have a poll question um, and that may come all at one time. So if you would, we're just gonna go ahead and launch the poll for you all. And if you could just answer by what, using whichever device you are on. The first poll question is, are you registered in Team Georgia Marketplace? Please just only answer the first poll question. Are you answer, Are you registered in Team Georgia Marketplace? You only need to answer the very first question as it pertains to the presentation. Okay, 
we have one. If, if you all don't mind, a few of you may answer. If you will, just answer the very first question. Are you registered in Team Georgia Marketplace? Please answer using the device that you are on. Okay. If you need more time. Someone said I can't submit the answer. No. Let me see if I can. I mean, it low. Oh, the submit button is not working. I think you have to probably respond to all the questions for, for it to work, Talisha. No, it shouldn't. It may just all at one. Yes. Okay, that's fine. You can't submit just one. Okay. All right. If you want, then if you guys will just um, go ahead and answer, you know. Uh, for the, the other two, problem. and then we'll come back. Yeah. So, all right. And we'll just stop. Okay. So it just says that we're not sure if it's a, an accurate, but if you are not registered, uh, then Julian will give you information for those of you who are registered. Congratulations. All right, Julian, go ahead. Okay. So we kind of wanted to know who is registered and who is not registered so that, you know, we can um, have an idea pretty much of how much information to give you. But we're just going to go through the entire uh, Team Georgia Marketplace process. And so um, to access Team Georgia Marketplace, which, of course, is the first step in doing business with the state of Georgia, you must register. Right. And these are the browsers that Team Georgia Marketplace currently supports. This is what the Team Georgia Marketplace interface looks like. So when you go to our website, and I'm not sure if everyone has been to our website, but if you haven't, I would encourage you that after this um, session that you, you know, spend some time on um, our website. So for those who are already registered um, at this um, screen, you would sign in to access your profile. If you have not yet registered, you will click on user registration um, to register. Um, so there are three ways to register in Team Georgia Marketplace, right? Um, well, when you log in, you have three options. So if you're unsure of how to register, the system will help you to figure out how to register, right? If you know you have not yet done business with the state of Georgia, the you're going to click on better registration to register. If you are already registered, you're gonna click on add new user. You can add uh, additional users to your profile. And these are the people that's gonna help you to manage your profile. Next slide. All right, so the registration process is a five-step process. It's gonna take you about 10 minutes. It's free, very streamlined. And step one is where when you're registering, you have to register as a business or as an individual. If you are registering as a business, you must have a tax ID number. If you are registering as an individual, you must have a social security number. Step two is where it's gonna ask you for some identifying information concerning your company, such as your tax ID number, your NIGP code, and of course the NIGP code is a five digit code that pretty much describes your goods or services. NIGP code is used by the state government. There are over 13,000 codes, so the system will help you to search for the codes that best speak to what you do. Um, you, if you're going to ask to add your primary address, and we try to um, encourage suppliers to make sure that they add their email address, correct email address. Reason being, once you register in Team Georgia Marketplace, the email address that you use to register, that's the address that we're going to use from the system to send you emails. So make sure that your email address is correct. Your step four is where you can add your contacts. And step five is where the system will allow you to review the information you're including 
before you hit the submit button. Next slide, please. All right, so Team Georgia Marketplace, once you register in Team Georgia Marketplace, the next step now is that you will be getting bids information from the Georgia Procurement Registry because these two systems work hand in hand. So you can access the register from our website. This is what it looks like. Next slide. And so the register, earlier this year, we had a new look and feel to the registry. So if you had access the register prior to um, the up updates, you would have seen a total different uh, look and feel. But this is what the register looks like. Next slide. So uh, many times, you know, we tend to search for just what is open, so open bids. And so I would also encourage you to not only look at what is open, but also look at what has been awarded. Reason being, this is gonna help you to figure out who is buying what you sell, which is one, who your competitors are, who are winning these bids, two, who the buyers are on these bids, three. It will also show you the NIGP codes that are attached to these bids that of course gonna help you because if you did not get a bid notice, you know, for you know that bid, then you could go back and update your profile in Team Georgia Marketplace. The Georgia Procurement Registry is used by state government. We are mandated by law if what we're buying is $25,000 or more to use the registry. Municipalities, county government, and K through 12 public school district, and you could go to the ruling, um, Talisha. There's a ruling that local government has to advertise, and we use the word advertise because what they're merely doing is posting their solicitation to the Georgia Procurement Registry so that everyone who is registered in Team Georgia Marketplace has an opportunity to get these bid notices. So remember, we have over a hundred and odd counties um, various local governments, cities, K through 12 public school district. So that's a lot trying to go to each of these sites to get information. But once you register in Team Georgia Marketplace and any of these local government entities post a bid in the Georgia Procurement Registry for $100,000 or more, you will get an email alerting you that this bid is posted. The difference though is that there will be a link that's gonna take you to their website and that's where you're gonna to have to register in their website and submit their bid. And they're not required to follow DOAS policies or procedures for posting guideline, competitive solicitations or protest procedures. Next slide. Um, so eSource, I talk about Team Georgia Marketplace, and that's the first step in doing business with the state of Georgia. That's where you register, and that's where you can also bid. The Georgia Procurement Registry, where bids are posted, but we have another system, and it's called eSource. eSource, unlike Team Georgia Marketplace, does not have its own URL. So it's accessed through the Georgia Procurement Registry, and it's used by the colleges and universities. Team Georgia Marketplace is used by the technical colleges and the entities, right? You don't have to worry about, well, okay, am I in Team Georgia Marketplace or, or am I eSource, right? Because once you access the solicitation, of course, there's gonna be a link that's gonna take you to where you need to get to. For eSource bids, they start with an ES. So when you're in the registry searching and any bid that you see that start, the bid number start with ES, it's an e-source bid. Next slide. And so this, and I'm not sure if you guys can see this screen, it's real tiny, but and this is what the e-source bids will look like. Next slide. So to respond to an e-source bid though, you have to get an email similar to this. And the email is gonna have a, your, um, user ID and it's gonna have a password. That user ID is your email address, the same email address you use to register in Team Georgia Marketplace. The password is gonna be unique to your company. There is gonna be a link that is also gonna be unique to your company. So once you put in the user 
pa your user ID and your password, you will now have access to an e-source bid. So it's a little different from Team Georgia Marketplace, but again, like I said, once you're on the register searching, the register pretty much will um, tell you what next to do. Next slide. And so with that being said, I'm gonna turn you over now to Dr. Hall, who is gonna take it from here. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Julianne. Good morning, everyone. And Good morning. Uh, first of all, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate this opportunity. And uh, I'm gonna turn the corner just a little bit because my job is to, can, to, uh, to take you through some actual uh, opportunities that are available here in the state of Georgia. And I will start off by saying there are, there are many, many opportunities in the state of Georgia. All right, as you can see from my, my presentation, the, our theme here today uh, is get a piece of the peach. Uh, can we get everything? No, but can we get something? Yes, absolutely. We're going to uh, give you some, uh, some tips uh, for you to consider in terms of uh, including those into your strategy, okay? You can go to the okay. next one. Well, yeah, okay, and Dr. Hall, if you don't mind, just real quick, uh, we're gonna make sure there aren't any questions. I'm gonna check the chat box. Okay. Um, as we have a question regarding uh, Julian's part. Oh, uh, and if they don't mind, okay. And that first question is, what are the requirements for registering in Team Georgia Marketplace? Okay, so there's actually no requirement to register in Team Georgia Marketplace. Anyone that has a social security number, because there's two ways to register, remember? Social security number or tax ID, you pretty much can go into Team Georgia Marketplace and register. Those are the identifying factors that we use to track everyone, whether it's individual or companies that are registering Team Georgia Marketplace. Again, it's free. Um, anyone can register in Team Georgia Marketplace. Excellent. Thanks Thank you, me. Julian. You're welcome. Okay, Dr. Hall, take it away. All right, great. Thank you. All right, first, I'd like to give you an overview of, of my particular areas as uh, Ms. Bailey indicated, I am the group manager for contract management uh, here in the state of Georgia. And so we'll give you a little uh, overview of what our responsibilities include. We are responsible for the administration of statewide contracts. Now, we have two groups of contracts. And as was, uh, was stated earlier, we have our agency contracts and we also have statewide contracts. Those, those contracts that are uh, they're made available uh, enterprise-wide, okay? So that those are the contracts that my team is responsible for managing. We, uh, again, we monitor uh, those contracts. We find the terms and conditions and the responsibilities of both parties associated with the contract. We are also re responsible for managing the renewals, uh, the amendments and extensions, and most of our contracts have a, you know, a base term, uh, if you will, and most, most of them are either uh, one year uh, base term with four renewals or th or two year base term with three year one three year renewal options. We try not to have our contracts run too long because, of course, we want to make sure that everyone in our state has an opportunity uh, to have access to uh, to state contract the state contracting process. We're also uh, responsible for supply management. This is well, one of the parts of, of our responsibility that I enjoy the most, and that is working with our suppliers, making sure they understand the contract. And up on to participate in the process, giving in, in them information that allows them uh, to feel very comfortable uh, in terms of uh, posting bids and partic actively participating uh, in the bidding process. Okay, we're also again in terms of supplier performance, ensuring that our current suppliers are performing according to the uh, to the terms of the agreement. We do conduct uh, business review meetings on a regular basis. So that is to ensure again that our contracts are being adhered to. We're responsible for working with all of our clients, our customers statewide uh, to help them to resolve uh, any issues that they are having with those statewide contracts um, and uh, if they are unable to resolve those uh, on their own. And also as we're doing today, we're, we're, we are responsible for assisting in the marketing effort. We partner, uh, as you can see with uh, Ms. Julian uh, and Ms. Jackson and their team uh, to, insist, uh, to assist our, our uh, statewide contract suppliers because we want our contracts uh, to grow uh, and i.e. we want the spend and the usage on those contracts to grow. And I thoroughly believe that if our suppliers are successful, we're successful. We are in partnership together with our suppliers. Okay, so that is that's an overview of what we do. Let me go to the next. Let me go to the next slide there, and uh, 
So I want to uh, to state what my objective is here. Uh, my objective here is again is to encourage the suppliers, and that would be you all uh, to take as as I said earlier, what I'm going to consider to be a wide lens view of contracting opportunities throughout the entire state of Georgia. Wide lens, that's very, very important. I think that if you would incorporate that into your strategy it would be very, very helpful. Go to the next slide, Ms. Jackson, please. And uh, just to let this, you can see that wise, that wide lensed view says, uh, of course, we are all you know mostly focused in the Atlanta area. Most of us are here, but I'll, I just want to remind you that the state of Georgia is a large, large, large place. All right, uh, there are 159 counties uh, throughout the state of Georgia, and every one of those counties, uh, they are they need. And when I say you know the counties, uh, in terms of state government uh, offices are there. And our, our Board of Regents, there are universities and colleges all over uh, the, the, the state of Georgia. So they need the same kinds of goods and services and also IT products. So again, wide lens, wide lens. That, that, that is absolutely my message today. Please take a wide lens of verge. Now, certainly we want to, to take uh, advantage of all of the opportunities within the metro area. Of course, that's our largest uh, area in the, in the, uh, the state of Georgia. But again, I, I'm asking everyone to please uh, to consider and plan and execute, not just plan, but I think it's time to do some executing. All right. Execute on what? A statewide basis. Okay, next slide, please. Just a little bit about the, uh, the portfolio that my team, uh, that we're responsible for, and you can see it is very vast and we take it very, very seriously and we're honored to, uh, to serve on behalf of the state. Uh, we have three main categories within state purchasing. Uh, we have our goods category. Our goods category, we currently have approximately 216 statewide contracts that have been awarded within that category. And, and we'll talk about the kinds of things, uh, uh, products, if you will, uh, that, that uh, are within that category in just a second. Our second category is technology. Within our technology uh, category area, uh, we currently have approximately 81 statewide contract uh, suppliers that are within that those um, those particular areas. All right. We have uh, 76 categories, and that's fine to stay on that. All right. Again, the uh, within each of those areas, just to let you know what what's what's there in terms of uh, the contracts. But then our technology group, of course, that's our computers and our printers and, and the servers and the stores and software and those kinds of, of contracts. Okay. So if you, you know, if you provide those services and you're like to, you know, to uh, to make a bid for some of the statewide contracts, then absolutely we certainly invite you to do so. I'm gonna go over that pipeline in just a minute because that's gonna let you know exactly, you know, what our team is working on now and uh, what's projected. But also from the uh, you know, in the uh, healthcare area. These are some of those contracts. We have biological supplies, uh, you know, in specific gases that are related to the medical field, industrial medical gases. We have a statewide contract there. So if that's your area, we invite you uh, to participate uh, on the next solicitation. Uh, in terms of, of uh, the other types of contracts that are utilized by colleges and universities and, and enterprise-wide, we have, of course, I contract is uh, we're getting ready to you know do some activity uh, geared towards putting a new uh, administrative vehicles contract in place so we have a, as you can see a vast fleet um, portfolio of contracts again administrative vehicles coaches that's um that's our uh, big buses and, you know our mass transit buses we also are um, matter of fact I was in a meeting yesterday uh, where we got the approval to move forward on our police pursuit vehicles so if you uh, if you provide uh, those that particular item please uh, please uh, you know take advantage of that particular opportunity and then also we have our office supplies contract which we uh, recently we, we recently awarded and I, we were really proud of that office supplies contract because uh, that did include uh, a number of our small businesses and and this is also important the small businesses uh, got together and formed you know a joint venture you know sometimes you may you as a, individually singularly, you may you you know you may not have the uh, the capacity to uh, to fulfill all of the requirements, but collectively, right? 
collectively, certainly that would increase your, uh, your opportunities uh, to meet the total requirements of a solicitation. So I, that's another little tip that I'm gonna throw out there right quick, is that to network with each other where, where it makes sense and, um, and, and increase your opportunities for uh, bidding on statewide contracts. All right, let's go to the next slide. All right, so here's our pipeline. All right, and of course, it was important to not just have discussions about you know theory but here these are actual contracts uh that are on the pipeline and this is what our sourcing team uh, is working on we're we're currently working on putting a new contract in place for atv utv golf carts our furniture statewide contract and that that is one of our largest statewide contracts within state government uh, our lamps and ballast contract our natural gases police pursuit vehicles as i indicated and it, uh, in this time of you know, COVID-19 in response to that, we, of course, we figured out and our, our customers have asked us to put a statewide contract in place for disinfecting services, right? And uh, so that that is in response to what our, our customers said, this, these, uh, this, we need this to happen. So that is absolutely on our pipeline at this point and work has already begun. We also, again, we are, we are looking at um, doing some work and putting a new contract in place with our fleet management services um, um, portal and that particular contract a, we have a management consulting contract that the team will be working on networking equipment software and services help telehealth i'm sorry telehealth telemedicine and that is another uh, of the solicitations the contracts that we're going to put in place in response to our current uh, COVID-19 uh, in, environment as requested by our customers. And then the last one that's on the list uh, uh, is the wireless mobile communication services uh, solicitation. So you see, we're really, really busy. The team is, is uh, engaged and reaching out. So, um, so we certainly invite you again to uh, take part and, and uh, issue a response to any of the solicitations that you feel that you uh, qualify for. All right. Okay, can we go to the next next slide? All right, Ms. Jackson, you want to go ahead and take take it from here? Absolutely. So I just have to apologize to you guys because the cursor, it's it it does its own thing. And so if anything pops up or the screensaver comes on, I have to keep moving the cursor in order to keep it steady until I'm ready. So um, I apologize for that, for going ahead, but here's a poll question. And since we're, our polls were not, let's just uh, see if we can do this in the chat. And then we have a few questions that are in the chat, Dr. Hall, if you don't mind. Okay. No, that's fine. That's, that's awesome. I saw them pop okay. up. That's good. Stuff. Okay. Wonderful. And that's when my cursor would go crazy. So first of all, let's do a poll and it's going to be the same poll as you guys will recall from earlier. But now if you want to go ahead and answer number two of the poll and then you can just put in whatever answer for the other one since now we understand that you cannot uh, submit unless you answer all three questions. So if you would, this is specifically for poll number two, question number two of the poll. So if applicable to your business, how many of the fiscal year 2021 pipeline contracts would you be interested in? And those are the pipeline contracts and categories that Dr. Hall just mentioned. So if you would be interested in some of these, none of these, or all of these, if you pl would please just answer the question and I'll give you about 30 seconds. If you can answer on whatever device you have, that would be great. Okay, about 10 more seconds. If you can answer on whatever device that you have, uh, if you could answer in the poll and not in the chat for this one, that would be great. That would be very helpful. And again, you may have to answer all three questions in order to submit your answer. Okay. And so, if everyone can see. So here we have some of these uh, uh, would be of interest to you. So let's talk about that, Dr. Hall. Do you mind? All right. 
You know, that's very, very good to know. Again, we, you know, we, we, you all are asking information of us, but we are also asking uh, for you all to give us your feedback because we certainly want to, uh, to make sure that we're, you know, we know that we have the supplier base out uh, in the marketplace to respond to our bids, right? Absolutely. Our portfolio is only as good uh, as the, you know, as the quality of, a, of the contract that we're able to put in place. And uh, and that that is only as good as the suppliers who actually take the uh, take the the time or actually are committed and actually respond to the solicitation. So we appreciate the feedback. So in reference to contracts and the types of contracts, we have three questions pertaining to the types of contracts that you may that the state may have. One is, does the state contract with food companies, uh, management consulting companies? or uh, educational consulting companies? So. Okay, all right, so I'll take the, the questions two and three first. Management sure. consulting is on our statewide contract uh, portfolio, as you saw, so that, that, that would be a potential opportunity, okay? So please be prepared to, uh, to, you know, to respond at the appropriate time. The key there is registering, and if you register, then you will get notification through the system that that particular bid has been has been posted. Um, yes. All right. Um, what was the what first question was regarding education, educational and telehealth. Okay. Telehealth, definitely. Mm -hmm. Ab absolutely. So those are on the, the pipeline, but I do recall you asking with regards to food, food contract. Correct. Okay. That is correct. All right. Yes. So we recently put in, and I, now I want to make sure I'm level setting here. What we're speaking of now is part one of our wide lens. Okay. Right. I'm going to talk about part two of that, where there are other opportunities. This is statewide. Okay. Opportunities. We just recently put a, a, a new food contract in place in, in, in uh, at statewide level. So it, it's going to be a few years. Uh, I, I mean, I'm giving a good guess here. At least at least three or four years before the food statewide contract becomes available uh, for a bid again. I, however, with that said, the food contract does not cover any and all food items. It, it covers a specific group of food items, and that's what it covers. So everything else that's food related that would be needed uh, throughout the state in terms of in terms of our state agencies, then those would be covered through an agency agreement. So so just because the, you know, the statewide contract for food has been uh, already awarded. There's still opportunity at the agency level, which we're going to talk about in just a second, okay? Okay, perfect. Um, and I'll answer one more question and then we'll let you continue with your presentation if that's okay. Okay, all righty, sure. Okay, what, uh, the category for education, what category would education be under in your pipeline? if at all? Well, we would not have a specific category for education, but what I will say is that the Department of Education and all of our education partners utilize all of our state, for the most part, all of our statewide contracts. Absolutely, you know, our team now is doing an, an amazing uh, amount of work and uh, working hand in hand with the Department of Ed Education to, uh, to equip our young people with the, with the Chrome uh, you know, notebooks. So we're very, very engaged in that. They utilize our statewide contract, you know, for that. And of course, uh, you know, uh, they utilize it for our off supply. So they, they, the Department of Education is not a category in and of itself for, you know, for the, uh, for in terms of categorizing for, for being purposes. The Department of Education is a very, very important customer and who has great volume and that utilize the statewide contract. Is, is that helpful? Yes, that is. And okay. Julian, if you just mind going back to the question of um, how would they go about finding previous or past uh, contracts that they can take a look at and see, uh, you know, their performance or uh, any of their qualifications of them. Sure. So if you go to Georgia Procurement Registry, that's where all our bids are posted. And so under the search option, instead of looking for what's open, you're gonna change the search option to awarded. And so you have the opportunity to put in a description. So for example, janitorial, and I'm just throwing something out there. So if I'm a 
janitorial company, then I, when I go to search for what was awarded in the past, I would put in the word janitorial under the description and then hit a search. And what's gonna happen is the system will bring up all the bids that has been awarded in the past um, based on that keyword that you put in. And so now you can go through and you can see who has used a janitorial contract in the past, companies that are winning these contracts, how much they were paid. And so what that will do is that will help you to set your price point and to position yourself. But you have to remember no two bids are the same. So, um, and it depends on, you know, what the requirements are, you know, what the needs were. And so um, when you see a bid, don't think that is gonna be exactly the same as what was awarded in the past, but it will definitely help you to kind of review to see, well, okay, what do I need to do? And so you use those mostly for, you know, research purposes, just to help you, to gauge you and to see who is buying what you sell and who is winning these contracts so that you can research those companies and see what they have got and what you need to do in order to get to a place where you're start winning bids too. Perfect. All righty, thank you. Okay, Dr. Hall, will you please continue? All right, so let's see. I think that poll is still up. You're gonna need to close that out. Oh, okay, there we go. All right. All right. Okay, so in terms of how to access the statewide contracts, and I'm gonna kind of speed by this a little bit here uh, because I do wanna to get to the next, next uh, section and that's the wide lens with the agency and the local governments. But in, in order to see uh, what statewide contracts that we currently have uh, active here in the state, then you would need to access uh, Team Georgia Marketplace, okay? And it's very, very simple. Uh, you sign in accessing accessing there your user ID and your password is very simple. You just only need to enter TGM guest lowercase and for the password it would be TGM guest. Very, very simple. Let's go to the next slide. All right. And there you would you know you would click on the advanced uh, search there uh, that, that where it features all of the information on the contract status and who is the contract administrator. And when it says contract administrator, then that would mean that the assigned contract manager on my team uh, who has been, a, who is the, uh, the, the subject matter expert and the, the responsible person for that, for that statewide contract. Let's go to the next slide, please. All right, so this is the second part of our wide lens strategy and I'm gonna preach that today, okay? That's very important. Second part, the first part is, is taking advantage of all statewide contract opportunities, but the next part is to take advantage of the state agency and local government opportunities. Those are vast. Uh, again, we have 159 counties and we have state agencies throughout the counties. Each of those state agencies, uh, they have procurement professionals in those offices and they are responsible for uh, the procurement activities specifically for that agency. And they post all of their procurement um, activities on the, uh, the Georgia Procurement Registry. So one part of this is this, the statewide contract index through Team Georgia Marketplace. The next element of our wide lens is the Georgia Procurement Registry, okay? All right, that's very, very important. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so here we're talking about uh, what is our, our, our strategy here. Our strategy here for success and to get a bigger piece of the pie, number one is to clearly widen your view to understand that Georgia is, is much larger uh, than metropolitan Atlanta, all right? So step one is to decide on a wide lens approach, okay? And then number two is to target and uh, target an opportunity uh, that you, you know, you want either, either statewide or, or some opportunity that has been, been identified through an agency or a local government partner. But to me, uh, what's most important is to take the active step again, of, of participating in the process, okay? At some point, you're gonna have to jump on in there and, and, and uh, 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 present a response to, uh, to some of the proposals. And if you have any questions as it relates to uh, a statewide contract process, please feel free to contact me 
and my phone number, my, uh, my phone number, my email is presented, and I'll be more than happy to help you or uh, you know any member of my team. We are here uh, to help uh, all of our partners, and we, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to do so. Are there any? I think that's uh, that's the last slide for me, Mr. Miss. Yeah, but I want to entertain some additional questions if there are any. And I absolutely enjoyed myself here. Appreciate the opportunity. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Hall. Thank you. And yeah. it seems like uh, we'll just check the chat before we start with the next. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. Are there projects below 25,000 also listed in past performance screens or in the registry? Julian, you want to answer that? What was the question? Are projects, are there projects that are below $25,000 also listed in past performance screens? Or okay, so anything um, 25, 25, below $25,000 listed in the Georgia Procurement Registry because we have a bidding threshold which is $25,000 or more has to be posted in the registry. You might find you might find um, some stuff in the registry that are lower than $25,000 because the buyer has a choice as to whether or not you know they post in the registry but they have to. So it's just a matter of you know searching through and, and seeing if there's any under twenty five thousand dollars bid. Okay. Um, also, does the contract does the state contract with video production companies? Um, and if answered, they, they apologize. They were not able to hear or it was not clear. But the video production, we did not address that one. Okay, uh, Dr. I'll Hall, would you like? Yeah, it's, I'll take that. They're asking more to under uh, like security consultants for risk assessments. So, okay, now I I cannot answer the specifically for risk consulting, but what I say is that we do have uh, through through the you know here in the state mostly at the agency level uh, agency agreements for video productions. We do not have a statewide contract for that. And is that you would do research on the Georgia Procurement Registry and select all and put in you know, into that uh, particular portal uh, video productions and it will show you all of the all of the contracts that have been uh, awarded at the agency level for that particular service. Okay. All right. Um, and I think that's it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. I all right. It. You're very welcome. Oh, uh, we do have one more question. And Julian, I know we talked about uh, if if they are a minority owned company, should they become certified firsthand? And what advantage, advantages are there to being minority certified? Um, I go into a little bit about one process, but Julian, I know you always talk about the MBE DBE certification process and the differences between the two of being certified and then, um, you know, going through those companies or, or utilizing them as a resource. So you want to talk about that and how we do not have state set asides. Sure. So uh, for state of Georgia entities, right? So that's again the colleges. Mm -hmm universities and the entities that fall under our purview, um, there are no set-aside program um, for state funds, right? If it's federal funding, then there might be goals that need to be made. We do have a MBE program in the state of Georgia. However, it's not a standalone program. We have a collaboration with GDA DBE program. So whenever a um, company is approved for GDAT DBE and they're identified as an MBE company, their information is sent over to us. We issue that company an MBE certification. Their information is stored in a customer relation management system that we have. And it's made available for any of the colleges, universities or entities that may receive federal funding and need to have some companies um, bid on, on any contract that there is a goal to, to meet, right? So that's one way to use. So from time to time, if 
we're asked to you know, provide a list of MBE certified companies, um, we do that. In addition to that, the company is marked certified minority in our Georgia procurement registry. That's where we have information on everyone who's registered um, with the state of Georgia. And so prime contractors and other buyers within the state have the ability to search for minority companies in the Georgia procurement registry um, and to reach out to them. Um, when a prime contractor uses a subcontractor in the state of Georgia, they get a tax incentive. So that encourages them to use the state of Georgia MBE certified companies on their project because of course those companies are able to get work and they get a tax incentive. Um, currently that's how that program you know, is been operated. Um, we have a informational session coming up. Um, if anyone is interested, um, October 6th, that's next Tuesday. And it's with GDAT, we're gonna be um, talking about the MBE DBE program with GDAT and with the support services units that are in place um, to help DBE certified companies. We'll also have representative from DOAS who will be talking about the MBE certification process. So if anyone is interested in that, um, it's on our website. Um, I would encourage you to go ahead and, and register um, because there's gonna be a lot of information um, discussed in regards to the MBE process in the state of Georgia. Okay. Uh, Perfect. Thank you. Talisha, yes. Melvin, uh, Talisha. Yes. yes. So one, of our, one of our members is one last question in chat, um, which is, does the state contract with, um, is it video production companies, I believe the question is? So that, that shouldn't take long to respond to. Yes, Dr. Hall just, I think we just addressed that one. Oh, we did? Okay. All right. Yes. Great. Thank okay. You. No worries. No worries. All righty. We're going to finish up here and I'm going to talk to you about the small business initiative and the small business aspect of DOAS and how we are reaching out and really trying to su support small businesses by providing access to purchasing opportunities, creating jobs, economic opportunities. Um, and so that's where I come in and I like to call myself the small business cheerleader as an advocate for you and helping you sustain and not just sustain but grow your business uh, to capacity in a sense where you're able to uh, know about and do business with the state of Georgia. So see my own cursor doesn't work for myself. <laughs> So the state of Georgia, the business definition for a small business is a business that is independently owned and operated with either fewer than 300 employees or less than $30 million in gross receipts per year. So if your business or any aspect of your business's business falls within those two categories, um, in addition to being physically uh, located or conducting uh, business in Georgia for at least one year prior to any bid or proposal to the state. That is uh, a new business that is housed or domiciled in Georgia and regularly maintains a place from which business is physically located. However, that place from which the business is conducting uh, business or located shall not include a post office box, a leased private mailbox, a site trailer, or a temporary structure structure, then you are considered a Georgia resident business. And a Georgia resident small business is a business that maintains the criteria of a small business of a Georgia resident as well. So if you fit any of these categories of having less than 300 employees, if you are housed in Georgia or your business operates in Georgia, if you have less than $30 million in gross receipts and you do not maintain a, a PO box a pri or a leased private mailbox, you've been in business for at least one year um, prior to any bid or proposal with the state, then you are considered a small business or the state of Georgia is defined as a small business. If that is the case, if you would, 
let's find out from you how many of you fit that criteria or how many of you are considered a small business. So I'm going to relaunch the poll. And if you would just answer question number three. Again, you may have to answer all of three of the questions. The two questions, one and two, were previously asked in the presentations before, but question three is where we are now. If you could answer all three questions, specifically question number three, and submit your answer via whatever cellular device you are using or electronic device you are using, we would appreciate it. Okay, I'll give you about 10 more seconds. Okay, so there you have it. It looks like 100% of you, so possibly about 13 out of 20 or so, are considered small business. So that's perfect, great. Okay, we're gonna go on. So having said that, there is a small business initiative that it has been put forth uh, by the governor's office and carried out through uh, the Department of Administrative Services. And in this small business initiative, the benefits are to you for agencies or entities to use small businesses and promote small businesses on our, our behalf is to promote small businesses for the purchases under the $25,000 bidding threshold. So as Julian said before, you can find some of those if they uh, actually uh, put those into our Georgia procurement registry, you are able to find those and those companies um, can be there and you can find them if you, you are a company. So if you are uh, certified as an MBE or DBE, you can be marked. And sometimes the entities and agencies also uh, can do, I'm sorry, am I okay. getting feedback? Okay. Another initiative, a part of the initiative and the benefit is that entities are encouraged to use small businesses to satisfy Talisha, unmute yourself. Are you able to hear me now? Yeah, I just I had to mute everybody because somebody so you, you go ahead. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, and it, it eliminates administrative burden um, in this initiative and it also encourages small business participation. There's also the inaugural Small Business Symposium that we held at the beginning of this year, 2020. And through that uh, a symposium, we offered a one-day professional development learning and networking uh, opportunity for small businesses to attend and network. Uh, it was a great event back in February and it was held in Dublin, uh, Georgia. So it was there to, support Georgia-based businesses, um, giving them access again to purchasing opportunities and economic opportunities for success and greater access to educational and support services. So we are happy and pleased to uh, say that we are announced that we are working on a virtual small business symposium to present to you as well this year. Um, and hopefully registration will be open soon and it will be available to those of you who register. So please, please look out for uh, that symposium coming up virtually on our small business website at the Department of Administrative Services. Um, again, if you want to learn how to do business with the state more in-depthly of what we're saying here and, to, and giving you here, learn about more uh, upcoming bid opportunities, as Dr. Hall mentioned in his presentation, and connect with other pur purchasing professionals throughout the state, then this would be a great networking and uh, resource for potential partnerships. So please take a look and be on the lookout for a small, a virtual small business symposium for coming up for this year. 
So again, that was held in, in Dublin, Ireland, uh, Ireland, in Dublin, Georgia. Uh, Governor Brian Kemp addressed the audience, and again, through the governor's initiative, is uh, how we are using the DOAS platform as a launch pad to uh, push forth his initiative to grow small businesses and make Georgia the number one place for small business. Our Deputy Commissioner Lisa Eason was also in attendance and welcomed everyone to the symposium. And if you are interested in receiving additional information, please again visit our DOAS website um, and uh, you're able to find more information there. The Small Business Initiative also provides uh, federal uh, uh, access to the DOAS federal surplus, which collaborates with the Georgia SBA, which is the Small Business Administration Office to help certified 8A firms obtain surplus property from around the country at a reduced charge. So if you are 8A certified, then, and you are an established 8A firm with more than two remaining years of eligibility, then you want to contact our federal surplus property at DOAS Fed, F E D, sir, S U R, at doas.ga.gov for more information on how you can also gain access to that operation. Other resource partners, uh, resources and partners that we work with are the Small Business uh, Development Center, which is housed and funded through UGA and SBA, the GTPAC, which is the Georgia Tech Procurement Assistance Center, and the GDOT, Georgia Department of Transportation. Through the UGA Small Business Development Center, uh, they are a part of the UGA and they are housed throughout with 17 locations throughout the state of Georgia. You can typically find them on college campuses and around uh, Georgia with standing offices. They provide tools, training, and resources to also assist small businesses grow and succeed. Of those 17 offices, they range anywhere from Rome to Valdosta, and they are able to assist with uh, contracts, uh, uh, entrepreneurs, estate, uh, HR planning, financial assistance, and not so much loaning money, but helping you prepare that loan package in order to present uh, to a banking or financial institution if you are seeking additional funds. They also help with business plans and they offer free consultation to you at no additional charge because you already pay for it through your taxpayer dollars. They, you can visit their website at www.georgiasbdc.org. Another uh, great uh, consultation or resource for helping your business grow would be the Georgia Tech uh, Procurement Assistance Center, commonly known as GTPAC, and they offer assistance in forms of teaching, mentoring, and coaching as well. Uh, they have electronic tools, and they are no additional cost to any of your Georgia-based businesses, whether you be large or small, and uh, they also can help you to, in your interest or in potential to perform work either as a prime contractor or a subcontractor for federal, state, or local government agencies. So GTPAC is another uh, great resource and form of assistance to your Georgia businesses. If you have not seen them or visited them, please do so and their website at gtpac.org. We also have our partners with GDOT State Supported Funding Program, which is the Georgia Department of Transportation. So with them, Julian mentioned that we partner with them where they are able to uh, collaborate with the Miles Company, which is the MHMC 
uh, for an SSFP supportive services as consultants, and they're designed to assist uh, eligible firms with identifying and responding to business opportunities that are funded through the Transportation Act uh, under GDOT. And those eligible fir firms have access to training and matchmaking one-on-one -on -one assistance. They are an excellent resource. And once they provide the training, marketing, matchmaking, and also through them, they offer the certification. We partner with them not only to provide uh, training, as Julian mentioned, that's coming up on informational uh, sessions that's coming up on October 6th, but we also partner with them in issuing the certification once you have been certified. So they can be found at g.stateprojects.com. The Georgia, the University System of Georgia, as Dr. Hall mentioned, there are 159 counties in Georgia. And of those counties, uh, it provides services across the state, the USG system. It's a part of that community. How so? Because they are comprised of 26 higher educational institutions, including four research and comprehension comprehensive universities. They also have nine state universities and nine state colleges. What does that mean? That means that there are approximately 389 facilities within these systems that you that need services and that you can take advantage of. Uh, those are the small business uh, or the agencies that most government websites, they may offer a good deal of information about how to do business with them and list of upcoming contract opportunities. So this is where you want to go to find those additional opportunities. They can be reached or you can find more about the USG system at usg.edu. Jim Barnaby is a, one of the sourcing directors there, and you can always reach out and send an email to him. The agency procurement officers list is a list that DOAS has listed on their website and provides. Why is this important? This is a great tool to use if you are trying to reach agencies uh, such as the colleges and universities just mentioned. This list gives you the agency, the name, and their email address. It's a little cheat sheet, I call it. And with that, um, you want to prepare yourself, take advantage. This is your marketing tool in the days of virtual uh, platforms. We're not able to go and exchange business cards with anyone, but now you will have your own arrangements for being able to reach out and to make an appointment, send an email if you want to, uh, get in touch or find out what opportunities they have. Why is that? Because you want to be able to demonstrate that you've done your homework, being familiar with the agencies and what they buy. You want to be able to sell yourself and prepare yourself for having a succinct and written capability statement um, to explain what you're able to offer them and your capacity for doing business with them. Be prepared to expound on your past performance. Um, make sure it's relevant to, again, what they sell and what they offer. But this is a great marketing tool for those of you who are in this virtual age as a small business. On our small business webpage, we feature it on the doas.ga.gov main page and on our small, it has access to our small business webpage. So uh, here we join a, some of our small business partners for special events and we promote these on our small business webpage as well as our social media pages. So you want to make sure that you check out our small business webpage and here, I'm sorry, is an is some are some of the icons that or or some of the um, uh, sorry my thing is staring. the tiles that are featured on the small business webpage and here we have a designated space for small business resources. 
is in addition to the bids and contracts Julian spoke of, the MBE certification, uh, the small business symposium, and the training for suppliers that we offer. Uh, you want to make sure that you're aware of these training services because in uh, that we want you to be familiar with them on our monthly supplier training orientation, as well as our monthly systems training. So they, we offer those twice a month. And if you would like more information, you are more than free to check them out here. Okay. Coming soon, and as we engage in this virtual platform, we are now looking to uh, reach out through media as well, media and outreach uh, on the platforms of podcasts. So we have joined and also partnered with UGA SBDC to uh, co-host a podcast on small business fuel. Gives you a few uh, insights to the interworkings of small business on DOAS and how we're reaching out. Uh, a lot of our experts, uh, contract management experts and team members will be featured. Most recently, the commissioner of DOAS was featured not only on the UGA uh, Small Business Development Center podcast, but also on ASBN TV. So if you're not familiar with that, you're more than welcome to visit, again, our small business webpage at the doas.ga.gov website. Click on Small Business and Resources, and soon there will be a small business media page, media and outreach uh, tile that will focus and feature all of the previously recorded uh, media that we have participated in. Again, these are some of our uh, partners that we reach out to uh, as it pertains to the virtual platform. And so we want to make sure that you are aware that we are doing presence and engagement. Soon we'll even have an icon up here for the Atlanta Black Chamber as soon as Melvin sends that over to us, right? Yes. <laughs> For support and assistance, please feel free to reach out to us regarding our supplier services website. Um, you can do that and access the Georgia Procurement Manual, the Team Georgia Marketplace trainings, the eSource Suppliers Guide, and the eSource Suppliers Training Online Guide. Uh, the supplier orientation and webinars can also be found on our doas.ga.gov website. And for outreach and communications questions, you can always send an email to either Julian and I. And if you really have questions pertaining to procurement help, uh, please don't hesitate to contact the State Purchasing Contact Center Help Desk. And you, they, you can simply, simply send them an email at procurementhelp.doas.ga.gov or you may contact them by phone at 404-657-6000. And that concludes our presentation for today. So if there are or are not any questions, please feel free to ask and we will carry on. Thanks, Melvin. So uh, Talisha, uh, yes. Julian and Carl, fantastic. The yes, sir. Powerful stuff that we need to know. Um, so we, you know, we want to wrap by 12.30, if it's definitely we can do that. I don't know that there's going to be a whole lot of questions, but if there are, um, we will attempt to, uh, <laughs> to go through that. I wanted you, as a takeaway, what, what is step one, two, and even three, like for someone to say, okay, I, I'm going to move forward. Just, just reiterate, first thing you need to do. And then maybe if you've done that, is there a step two? All right, so for me, I think the first thing anyone needs to do if they're interested in doing business with the state of Georgia is registering in Team Georgia Marketplace. You must register. It's free. It just take about 10 minutes because once you register, that's when you're going to start getting those email alerts with bids that are posted in the Georgia Procurement Registry, right? So for me, the first step is registering. Dr. Hall? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think for me, the, the first step, of course, is to us is to take that wide lens view 
and assess what opportunities there are currently available at the statewide contract level, as well as at the agency and the, and the local government by accessing and becoming very familiar, very familiar, i.e. bookmark the Georgia Procurement Registry. And after that, take an active step to begin participating in the process. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's so interesting how we all uh, have different views of what definitely registering is the most important and taking a wide lens as to Dr. Hall said to see what contracts, you know, would you be interested in or, or can you uh, fill. And I would say from a small business aspect, uh, you definitely want to take a look at your business and see where are you business-wise as a whole, and are you able to, um, you know, really fulfill any of the obligations that come along with doing business with the state, and uh, just place yourself in either contractor or subcontractor category to say, which am I, and where do I fall? Excellent. I tag on to your comment there, Ms. Jackson, and I'm going to go back to one. Uh, you remember the importance of networking and partnering with each other and potentially developing joint ventures because I'm seeing that uh, a lot of companies are utilizing that particular strategy to make them to put themselves uh, in a better position to respond uh, to statewide contracts and also to to uh, to larger agency contracts okay you may, you may be small on your own but together I think you're a lot stronger Carl, you make an excellent point. Absolutely. We promote that type of collaboration within the chamber, and um, that is a big, big opportunity. Absolutely. So thank you for, for bringing that up because uh, I, I definitely forgot, but that was excellent. Thank you. Mm. And so I see the three of you, um, your, your contact information is on this screen. So I'm definitely hoping that ABC members, if you had a follow up question or something, you know. They are giving us access, which is one is a few words that we live by in the chamber. One of those words is access. Uh, so we appreciate you giving us access to you. If we have a question, uh, shoot them an email or something. I uh, greatly appreciate it. And I don't know that anyone has a verbal uh, question, but you know we are in the process of wrapping up. Uh, so thank you so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm just very, uh, grateful we had this opportunity. Um, we want to engage more with, with the state and it starts with knowledge, you know, information so that we can make the informed decision as to what we should be doing. And with that, and I would just, ahead, I'm sorry, Melvin, I just want to encourage everyone, please, please come out. If I didn't say it enough, if Julian didn't say it enough, um, the supplier trainings, we have them every month, every month. Um, and so please uh, take a look uh, on our website and make sure that you follow along for the next available date or convenient date for you. Uh, again, they are in two-part sessions. Uh, one is a, a webinar and the other provides a live demonstration through Team Georgia Marketplace. So please come take a look at that, register. Those are free and of no charge. Again, the symposium, we are looking for it to take place virtually this year. So we are already in October. We only have a few more months left. That means that you should be looking out for the registration to be open very soon. And additionally, we may have a little uh, tidbit of a surprise that's coming out and that will do a kickoff from that symposium for small businesses. So I don't wanna give too much, but please Please stay in touch and um, be on the lookout for what it what DOAS has in store for small businesses. Okay, thanks, okay. Melvin. And, and to Alicia, I will be in, in communication with you. I want to promote those activities that you just mentioned, and obviously yes. the symposium uh, to make sure that our members know how to manage their calendar. So, okay, um, great, fantastic. Uh, thank you to everyone who attended this event and we're looking forward to uh, the next one. Um, so everybody just stand by for that. But doing business with the state of Georgia, uh, thank you all for your time.